Hello YouTube and welcome back to Bad Luck Garage. Today we're doing our wideband and pillar pod uh, gauge cluster install on our 2002 C5 Corvette project, the China Vet. Here's what we're working with guys. Uh, we got the auto meter full pillar pod here. Part number 2650-1157. And then we've got our trusty old AEM, which I used to carry from car to car, but we are finally just going to permanently install this one here in the Corvette. So before I get started, I wanna once again say thank you to everybody for watching this video. Thank you to all my subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you may want to think about it. Also, when you finish watching this video, if you like it, be sure you give it a thumbs up. Or if you just want to be nice, you can give it a thumbs up now. Don't forget to share it if you think you might know someone who might need this information. And uh, let's get started. First, I'm going to ask you to please forgive the fact that there is no intake on this engine at the moment. But you guys who watched the last video know what's going on. So let's get to this wideband install. I am actually going to go ahead and start off underneath the car getting the sensor mounted. Now, if you've got an aftermarket uh, X-pipe and headers, you know, if you've got that going on for you, then chances are you've already got a wideband O2 bone up here. If you don't, if you're still running the factory exhaust, then you're probably gonna have to either A, go to a shop and get a bone welded in, or B, if you've got the skills, weld it in yourself. Me, I've already got one, so I'm going to unscrew the plug and plug in the wideband sensor. The next thing I wanted to do was figure out where I was going to run my wiring up. Now, uh, you know, I had the rear O2 sensors had these nice little clips here that used to hold the wires on the back side of this heat shield. So what I did is I took one of those, those old clips from the rear O2 sensors that used to be in here, and I used it to clip my wideband harness on the inside of the wall here. And you can see I've just got the harness kind of hanging here now because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up top and I'm going to fish down the other side of this harness, plug this in and try to pull it tight to avoid all the exhaust and everything. And then probably go in and stick some uh, zip ties, things like that, wherever I can. Full disclosure, I had thought about removing our tunnel cover plate here and trying to fish the wire up through there but due to the length of my wire it would have put the connector way back here somewhere and you know i wanted the ability if i absolutely had to to be able to take this out for whatever reason if it's just replacing the sensor or whatever so that's why i chose not to go inside here and that's also why i chose i know some people have run this up and into the center console well if your sensor ever goes out that's going to be a real pain in the ass uh, to have to take your center console and everything apart just to get this unplugged so that's why i'm doing it this way for those of you who may be wondering now we have the long part of our harness we need to fish this end down then we have to find a way to get this end inside the car now this isn't something i can really show you very well on camera guys um, all I can say is what you need to do is look down through here and kind of see where your factory wiring is run. You can also see where your fuel lines are run and try to kind of follow that path down. The objective here is to try to keep it kind of as far away from the fuel or the uh, exhaust as possible. 
So the more behind the engine you can get this, the better. Because if it's behind the engine, then it's not right next to the exhaust, if that makes sense. So after fishing that down, it actually ended up coming out almost right in front of where I had the plug laying under there, guys. So I went up back under the car, uh, plugged, you know, plugged the connectors together. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull this back up and it is nowhere near the exhaust, guys. It's, it's way back from it. I'll show you guys that here in a minute. But now what I'm doing is I'm pulling all the slack out and I'm actually gonna, because I went behind where the intake was, I'm gonna have to pull this around through here like this. So turns out if I would've just went from the side here, like I still had the intake on in the first place, then I wouldn't be having to do this right now. So yeah, the intake being on is not an issue. But I'm gonna pull the slack out of it and then I'm gonna find something, find something to zip tie to up here, you know, to, to keep the tension on it so it doesn't flop back down. It actually looks like the best thing for me to zip tie it to uh, would probably be that fuel line there. So you can see the fuel line above and right below it is my cable. So I'm actually gonna zip tie the cable to the fuel line and uh, then we'll go from there. After going underneath the car and confirming that, you know, by pulling the slack out of that, it, it had everything pinned up where it needed to be, nothing's gonna be moving around. Uh, I went from the fuel line and then I started zip tying to the uh, hood cable. So my cable now follows the hood cable from the passenger side, uh, follows it all the way down into the wheel well. And guys, this panel, you've just got like, I think seven, uh, seven millimeter screws going around here and then going in from underneath, there are, I think two more, maybe three, but I think it's just two more guys. But here is where you guys might cringe a little bit. I have been all over trying and trying to figure out a way to get these wires into the uh, passenger compartment <laughs> without drilling a hole. And uh, well, it looks like we're drilling a freaking hole. I have heard about guys pushing wires through with the cables to pop the hood there, the hood latch cables. But uh, here's the issue. We have to be able to get this whole connector through, which is actually uh, pretty wide. <laughs> so, I mean, I probably could just deep in the cable, just take a picture of it. So I get all my wires straight and deep in it. But even then, I just, uh, I don't think it's feasible really to try to push that through. Not when I could just pop a little hole down here uh, underneath the hood latch and uh you know just feed the wires in there guys make it nice and easy peasy and i also want to say this is a dry area anyway so i'm not worried about moisture or anything getting in here uh and speaking of moisture while you're under here <laughs> this is probably a good time to clean out your little udders here these come down from your cowl up there and they trap debris you know like i actually just pulled some nuts and some leaves and stuff out of these so these do need to be cleaned out periodically so <laughs> now's a good time to do it guys you can see the hole that i went in there and it is right underneath our uh our cables there for our hood latches so this stuff was actually like stupid thin <laughs> i mean the drill bit popped through almost instantly and the good news is it did in fact end up coming out right inside of our dead pedal. So I actually had to take that bolt out or, or that nut out and that nut out and remove our dead pedal here. So the cool thing about that is, you know, that's just uh, another, another layer <laughs> between that hole and the inside of the car, you know, you got our dead pedal there. So I'm not real upset about having to drill that hole, but when I finish all this up, what I'm gonna do is put some silicone in that hole to kind of fill it in, uh, you know, after we get everything else finished. But 
For now, uh, I don't know how much cable I'm gonna pull through and I do plan to tie up the extra cable inside that cavity in the wheel well. So moving right along. Now we have to work on our pillar. Should be able to just grab it and kind of pull it loose. You're, you're trying to kind of pull it straight back, I think. I've never done, oh yeah. Now I've never done one in a Corvette, but uh, it's pretty much like any car, guys. There we go. And you can see the clips that hold it in. You've got one, two, three clips. So yeah, it just, it comes straight back and that's it. So oh, here comes our next cringe moment, guys. We have our factory original pillar, uh, pillar trim here. And we have our auto meter gauge panel. Now, what we have to do is we have to attach this to that with the included hardware. And yes, it requires drilling. Now, some people freak out about this. I've actually had suggestions from some of you to use double-sided tape, and I really thought about that because here's the truth, guys. You really only have to attach it up here at the top corner. Um, if you shove this in as an assembly, this part down here will kind of get wedged in between the dash and, you know... <laughs> Well, that's pretty much all I can say. It'll get wedged in between the dash and it's it's not a big deal to just maybe tape this up here. But I don't care <laughs> and I'm just going to install it the way Autometer tells me to. Drill three sixteenths holes through the four corners of the A-pillar. I'm gonna put one up here where I just talked about, you know, up here in the corner. Well, I guess that is a corner, huh? But I'm gonna put one up here. I'm probably gonna put one right down here. And I may put one over here on this side somewhere. But here's the thing, guys. No matter how you look at it, um, I mean, really, you're, you're gonna need to drill holes in this because once this is properly installed, there's really no room for a wire to pass through. And if you're running something like, say, a boost gauge, uh, there's definitely no room here for, you know, a boost gauge tube. So unless you're running a digital boost gauge, you're going to have to drill through this anyway. So at this point, you need to just kind of get over it and uh, go to work. All right, guys. So there we are, all mounted up. I decided to put the pins in places that would be less noticeable. So I've got one here and one here, which that's actually gonna be on the windshield side. So you're not really gonna see those. And I've got one in this corner here. So the next thing we need to do is actually drill some holes for our wires to pass through. Remember that big, huge connector? Yeah, we've got to make the hole in the pillar big enough to fit that connector. I'm boring this baby out. That should get my connector through. If you're wondering how are we gonna fish our wires up through the dash, and down through the dash. Well, guys, you know that crappy, cheap interior in these C5 Corvettes that everyone always complains about? Well, this is the part where you rejoice because this plastic is so flimsy, you can literally just push it over like this, feed this wire up, and then drag it up around your little rubber piece here and hang it right here where it's gonna be able to get into the gauge pod.
speed up things like that but i wanted to show it to you in real time because i mean that's as long as it took to get the wires through guys like if you just push this in with one hand and you should see light from your uh, your footwell lights there uh, push this in and reach the other hand your right hand up with the wire i mean it's it's that simple guys you can just fish it through i know my head was probably blocking the camera but that's that's all i did guys all i'm gonna do is make sure i've got enough wire here just like that and i'm going to push these through into my top pod then i'm going to get my wide band plug these in and install our uh, pillar pod here we'll just plug our gauge in here as we have so many freaking times guys this gauge has been in so many cars it's ridiculous I like everything I got. My nitrous kits have been in so many cars, it's ridiculous. All right, and Autometer makes this to be a compression fit, which means you don't need the bracket on the back of the gauge. You just force the gauge in, and it's a nice snug fit. Now, we'll probably have to tilt it or rotate it or something. I don't know yet, but for now, let's just get this uh, pod back on the part where you could break clips if you're not careful guys make sure before you go to push this up in here make sure that these clips do in fact uh, line up with the slots that they're supposed to go into there we go we'll start up top here because I can see that that's lined up There we go, guys. All in. And you can kind of, down here, there's going to be a little push pin to push back up in there a little bit. Aha. Uh -huh. Like I said, we need to adjust our gauge here just a bit. we're in there we go guys nice and solid <laughs> probably ought to hit it with some uh armor all or some kind of dressing there but but we're all in see our vent there and i can act actually reach back here behind the rubber seal there and i can tell that my vent is uh where it's supposed to be so that's good there's the gauge now we've got to run the power wires. I know, I just said, let's run the power wires, but cut me some slack, guys. I wanted to get rid of some clutter, so. <laughs> I put our dead pedal back in. You can see it there. And if you look up here where the insulation is, you can see the wire that's coming from outside of the vehicle. I actually ran it in through the little, like, grommeted area in the insulation uh you know right above the hood latch cable so on to the wiring now come over here on the passenger side get our floor mat out pull our kick panel down and up and out and if you look right up here you're gonna see this little connector here with three wires coming in you have a orange a yellow and a black now from what I can deduce, the yellow is actually switched 12 volt ignition. The orange should be constant 12 volt and the black should be a ground. So after reading on the Corvette forum, it seems that these are the wires people usually tap into uh, when they're doing this. So I don't know if they're all like this, but it appears that these wires actually go nowhere in mine it loops around through this connector and this end is actually taped up with uh <laughs> what looks like 
black duct tape. So I'm assuming it's like this from the factory, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the black wire loose out of the tape, which by the way, guys, is very sticky. And I'm going to take the yellow wire loose. I am gonna test these uh, very quickly off camera and make sure that they are what they say they are. So now all we gotta do is get our wires from the driver's side over to the passenger side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to reach up in here and pull the carpet loose. I'm gonna take a coat hanger and I'm going to push it through my console and uh, I'm probably gonna need both hands, guys. So, but I'm gonna push it through and look at the daylight over there where I see a little gap. And that's where I'm going to, you know, feed the wire through. And see where my wire ended up. I'm just gonna bend it down a little bit so it stays down. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my bundle of wires, I'm going to tape it to my coat hanger and just pull it back through to the other side. After I got them pulled through, I just pulled the tape off and it is obvious I'm going to need to extend my power and my ground. Uh, this wire doesn't matter. I'm gonna have to extend my power wire and my ground wire and able to reach the uh, power wire and ground wire that we're using over there. But I wanted to show you after I pulled it across, I was able to just tuck the wire up inside my uh, knee bolster, kick panel, whatever you want to call this right here. So under the steering wheel. So no wires hanging down, nothing in the way. Before I worry about extending those wires, I wanted to run this, this uh, data wire right over next to my ashtray and my new switch panel that we installed a couple videos ago. So I have once again, taken my coat hanger and I've run it right down here by the hinge and it is coming out right here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tape my data wire to the coat hanger and pull it through up here. And just like that, easy peasy, we've got our data wire right here next to our switch panel. And uh, once we put our little connector, once we get our little connector on the end of it here, then what we'll be able to do is just push the wire in here and it won't be able to fall back in there with the square connector on it. It'll probably just tuck right here next to our cigarette lighter. Hey guys, I got my power wire and my ground wire extended. And then up here you can see I tied my red power wire into the yellow wire in the connector I showed you earlier and my ground wire into the black ground wire that I showed you earlier. So now we're going to go over here and test it out. Poo. There we go, guys. Just need to tidy up a few things and we're done. First things first, I don't like wires hanging everywhere. So we're going to run some wire loom around our new wires that we just ran here and tuck them behind this carpet panel and up above the uh, body control module there. The wire is all loomed up, tucked behind everything. So now I'm just gonna tuck my carpet back in, replace my kick panel, and put the floor mat in so the wife's not like, what the hell are you doing out here? There we go, done on this side. Next, I'm gonna put my little connector on to my data cable goes in the first pin slot then we can just push our cable back in here you can see our connector will just kind of hang there pull out as much wire as I need uh, to plug into my HP tuners unit when I'm not using it I just tuck the wire back in here and shut the door There we go, out of sight, out of mind. Now over here in the wheel well, I'm just gonna wind up all the excess wire from my wide band, and uh, I'll probably just tie it off to this frame support right here. You can see that's wound up and tied off in several spots. So what's left to do now is to put this panel back on and put my wheel back on. All right, panel's on, wheel's on, we're done. All right guys, wide band's in, video is done, Thank you for watching. If this video helped you out, don't forget to share it. Click that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Now get out in the garage, get something done, and I'll see you next time here on Battle Up Garage.